What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, we are participating in the unique antique challenge hosted by the Crafty Creech DIYs and Furniture Flips and co-hosted by the lovely Levon over at La Vintage Decor. Today's wonderful theme is vintage tattoos where we have to create a design inspired by tattoos of all kinds, but specifically vintage ones. Our goal with this challenge is to create tolerance and acceptance and kindness and peace and love throughout our community because there are so many of our wonderful furniture flipper friends here who have tattoos and they are so unbelievably talented but unfortunately receive a lot of hate comments about their tattoos. So hopefully with this challenge you see that it's not necessary for you to share your opinion on other people's tattoo art. Two, I hope we can all learn together how to be a little bit more kind and empathetic and understanding to one another and three, I just hope you learn a little bit about tattoos because tattoos are really cool and have some awesome history behind them. Now with all that said, let's talk about furniture flipping. As you saw earlier, these pieces are in pretty rough shape. The veneer is really busted and also they're just a little dirty. So like with any piece, we're going to start off with cleaning. I'm using a solution of water and vinegar and just giving it a nice wipe down. And then I had planned on sanding, but honestly, I got really, really consumed consumed by commissions and other works, challenges, all that good stuff. So I actually put these pieces aside for like about a year. It's been a very long time since I've worked on these pieces and they've just been sitting in my garage for that time. But I decided that this tattoo challenge would be the perfect opportunity to start working on them again. So just as a refresher, here is where we are officially starting with this time around. I got these and a dresser off of Facebook Marketplace for a total of $50. And honestly, I think that was a fair price for them because they are super beat up. And most of it unfortunately couldn't be saved, but we are gonna do our best to repair it and bring it back to something that is really awesome and cool. So on this top here, I'm starting with a 120 grit sandpaper just to get off most of the damaged finish and it was really easy with this top part. I did have to switch at one point to an 80 grit sandpaper where the finish was a little bit more intact but overall this finish was pretty easy to get off. For my different grits, I'm starting with 80 and then moving to 120, going to 180 and then moving to 220. To assist me with the sanding process, I am using this awesome gadget from Kneel It. It is a roller kneeling seat thing. <laughs> And it's really cool and really convenient. And honestly, it's really fun to just like roll around instead of having to get up every time to go get something or sitting on your butt all day or hunching over. All of that is eliminated with Kneel It. I really, really like this product. And if you guys want to try it, make sure to click the link in the description below and use my discount code MISSFLIPS10 for a 10% discount. Once everything was sanded down, I went ahead and vacuumed the entire piece to get the excess dust off and then went in with a wet rag to get all of the remaining dust. 
Now, I do realize that I definitely should have made these repairs before I got to sanding. However, I these pieces just threw me for a loop. I was just completely unorganized this week. I had so many things going on in my personal life as well as just wanting to get this right and to get it done in time. And so I just, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> if you take anything away from this, do your repairs before you sand. But for the repairs, I am just going in and cutting out a nice neat square. That way I don't have to match up like a crazy puzzle piece shape of the veneer. I just have to match a square to a square. And to patch it, I am using the veneer that I tore off from the lower half of the nightstands. To make sure that these cracks are pretty seamless, I'm going in with some of the dust that's left over from sanding and just filling in wherever the glue is so that the glue itself is stainable. While all my repairs are drying, I decided to get started on the design for the tattoo. And I decided to go with something a little bit more neo-traditional than actual traditional tattoo. And here is an example of a traditional tattoo. And then this is an example of a neo-traditional design. And I'll go more into the specific design elements of each and the history behind them. But for now, I just wanted to tell you guys that it is okay to start over. It is okay to hate what you make at first. It is okay to do multiple and multiple takes. I had never really done anything like this before, so it was a real challenge. So I decided to go in with Photoshop instead, just to create the general layout of what I wanted and to get the aspect ratio and everything right before I could go in and draw something real. I ended up changing the design a lot. However, this is the general idea and concept behind what I wanna do. For the stain and color of the piece, I decided to go and try something that I've never done before either with the stain and try to do like a really cool clouded splotchy effect with the color. So I experimented here with some stain and I used as well mineral spirits and water just to see what kind of reactions I could get and see what kind of patterns I could make. However, I didn't like any of this. I ended up scrapping all of this and just trying it directly on the piece because for one, this piece of pine is not going to react the same way to the stain or whatever technique that I'm using as a piece of veneer wood. So I just decided to go ham and just try everything. On the left here, I just did stain and I just sprayed it down with some water to see what that would do. In the middle here, I started with a really heavy coat of water first and then dropped some stain into the water and I thought that that actually looked pretty cool and that maybe could have gotten me the desired effect that I wanted. However, I knew that the natural color of the wood would show through and it would basically just all blend in once everything was dried and the top coat was on. For this right half, I went in with a uh, mineral spirit base and then tried the same thing by dropping the stain onto the mineral spirits. And again, this gave me a really cool effect. However, I just didn't think that it was gonna give me the design that I wanted because of the same process as earlier. It, it, the wood is, is just naturally gonna be dark with the top coat on there. 
Since I wasn't getting the desired result from any of these, I decided to take it to the back of the piece and just try anything. I tried a mixture of mineral spirits in water and the stain, and then I put mineral spirits and the stain into the syringe with like as a one solid mixture just to try to thin it out, and that didn't really get me anywhere, so... <sighs> I don't know, I, I thought that maybe I would be able to, to get it right once I did it on the piece, but also that didn't work out, but you know, trial and error, I guess. So unfortunately this didn't work at all how I had intended, it just ended up being really really dark stain, it didn't have any of the clouding effect that I wanted it to have, and so I'm just gonna wait for this to dry completely and then I'm just gonna sand it and hopefully get a better result. So now knowing what I know about the walnut veneer, you know, being a naturally dark color, I decided to go in and spray some bleach on beforehand and get like a really cool splotchy effect hopefully from that. And then I went in with some darker stain and just sprayed little bits here and there just to give some depth and really cool dimension and hopefully, fingers crossed, that will come through once I put the top coat on. If it comes out looking like this, I will be happy. This is kind of what I'm going for, so fingers crossed. While I was leaving those to dry, this is the concept that I came up with. So once my pieces were done drying, it was time to get the design onto the piece. So I went in first with pencil just to make sure I got the design right, and then went over it with some paint pens. But of course, in true Marissa fashion, once I went in to paint everything, my paint pen exploded everywhere and I had to uh, implement that somehow because my, my pen after it exploded was just leaking everywhere. But it ended up being kind of a blessing. It wasn't exactly the look I was going for, but it, it ended up looking pretty cool and I was able to work the drips into the design. So while I am letting you watch this design happen, I am gonna tell you a little bit about the history of tattoos and where they come from. Tattoos are over 2000 years old and come from a wide variety of traditions and demographics. There isn't just one culture that we can definitively say that tattoos came from, specifically because there are mummies from all over the world that have tattoos that are thought to have a wide variety of meaning and purpose. Tattoos throughout history have been used to do all sorts of things. They were used to mark prisoners, but more on the positive side, they were used to mark fertility or tradition or family lineage, stories, and some cultures even used it for healing for things like acupuncture. The word tattoo comes from the Samoan word tatau, which is the, the tool that they use to hammer in the ink to the skin. And in Samoa and other Polynesian cultures, getting a tattoo or a pea is a rite of power passage. It's a, it's a way for you to show that you are honoring your family lineage, your story, your, your history, your religion by going through the pain of getting a tattoo. Being raised in Hawaii, I have a particular understanding of why tattoos are so important to Pacific Islander people. And in even in high school, for example, in our yearbook, we have a dedicated section to show off the students who have the most tattoos because it's considered an honor for them to ignore knowledge and keep a tradition going that their family and ancestors have been doing for centuries. 
The meaning and significance behind tattoos began to change when we started putting it into context of slaves or prisoners that were being tattooed against their will to mark that they were either a slave or a prisoner by their captors. So for a long while, the mainstream or elite class didn't see tattoos as something that was significant or beautiful even. They saw it as something that marked oppression or someone being lesser than, which for the time period I understand, however it's a complete misrepresentation of what tattoos are and what they mean for people. Later in history, during the world wars, tattoos became all the rage. Sailors and veterans would get them to mark their travels or to mark what they've done or who they miss during war. This whole movement started the era of traditional tattoos and flash art. Flash art is a page of paper that has a bunch of different pictures on them that you can choose from and you can be like, hey, I want that tattoo. It's an already designed tattoo that you can get on you within a couple hours. And because of the ongoing tradition of flash art, clients are able to go into a tattoo shop and show the artist a picture of their grandfather from way back when and show them the exact tattoo that they had. And that artist is able to find that exact design from a flash art page and give them the exact tattoo that their grandfather had to honor them. Traditional tattoos specifically are characterized by bold lines and colors, as well as what you choose to depict. So a lot of traditional tattoos back in the day were made up of nautical signs because of all the sailors that got them, as well as things like daggers, mom tattoos, hearts, pinup girls, tigers, snakes, and the designs were mostly two-dimensional. It wasn't until later where neo-traditional designs came into play where you came up with things that were a little bit more 3D and more realistic. But the two characteristics that bond these two styles are still the bold outlines and colors used in the design. So for my tattoo concept, I made sure to keep all of those awesome elements of the bold outlines, but I decided to kind of make it a neutral palette by just doing it in black. In today's world of social media, tattoos have evolved immensely from where they once were. Different cultures throughout the world still use it to uphold traditions and faith. Meanwhile, others do it for self-expression. They do it because it makes them happy and seeing that art on their skin brings them joy. At the end of the day, whatever someone's reason is for getting a tattoo, it doesn't matter. It's their body, it's their art, and it's beautiful regardless of what they choose to get. In the future, I definitely plan on commissioning an awesome artist to give me a tattoo that I will love and cherish for the rest of my life. Going out of your way to comment some nasty comment on someone else's art or body or what they choose to do with either of those things doesn't do anything besides prove to that person what a nasty human you are. So next time you go to comment something nasty on someone's page or profile or picture, think about that. Let's spread love, not intolerance, not hate, love. And maybe we can make the world a better place that way. Unfortunately, because of the mishaps with the stain and me trying to do that clouded effect, as well as some weather that prohibited me from sanding, I wasn't able to finish either of these nightstands. However, I will have both of them finished in my video for next week, so make sure to stay tuned for that. And please make sure to check out the playlist of all of the amazing artists that we have in here and spread kindness, spread love, spread support. These artists are so talented and amazing and I hope that you acknowledge that regardless of what you think of what's on their arms or body. I have the link to the challenge playlist in the description below, so make sure to check that out. And thank you so much to our awesome hosts for hosting this amazing challenge. I absolutely loved doing this. It pushed me to so many limits and boundaries that I had never been to before. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't yet, make sure to like, subscribe, and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flippin' family. Thank you so much to all of your love and support. I appreciate every bit of it. And until next time, guys, stay flippin'.